On May 1, 2023, 34-year-old Manage Starm, a mother of three, was reported missing by her father. She vanished without a trace from her apartment in St. Paul, Ramsey County, Minnesota, sometime in April 2023. As officers from the St. Paul Police Department launched an immediate investigation to locate her, they uncovered unsettling details that pointed to one person, 40-year-old Joseph Stephen Jorgensen, her boyfriend. What dark and horrifying secrets would be unraveled as they dug deeper into Jorgensen's involvement? Would the truth behind Manage's disappearance finally come to light? Hi, and welcome back to Mysterious Hook Friends. Today we are looking at the disturbing case of Joseph Jorgensen. But first, if you still haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider hitting the subscribing button and the bell icon below. So without any further ado, let's dive right into this mystery. St. Paul, located in Ramsey County, Minnesota, is a vibrant city pulsating with history and modern allure. Home to more than 300,000 residents, it embraces diversity and fosters a sense of community. One of the oldest cities in Minnesota, St. Paul has several historic neighborhoods and landmarks, such as the Summit Avenue neighborhood, the James J. Hill House, and the Cathedral of St. Paul. According to statistics, your chance of being a victim of violent crime in St. Paul is 1 in 124, and property crime is 1 in 24. However, even in the face of progress, the city was shaken to its core, when a heinous and unthinkable crime occurred in 2023. Manage Starn was born on May 23, 1989. There is little information about her early life. Records indicate she had a brother named Nora Starn, but whether she had other siblings remains unknown. By the year 2023, at the age of 34, Manage was a single mother of three children. Her residence was a modest apartment located at 1428 7th Street in St. Paul, Ramsey County, Minnesota. It remains uncertain whether she had ever been married. Accounts from those acquainted with Manage during this time painted a picture of a likable individual. Those who encountered her spoke of her positivity, patience, and kindness that extended to everyone she encountered, regardless of their background. However, amid these commendable qualities, Manage grappled with personal demons. She faced the challenges of drug addiction and mental health issues. These struggles were known to her family and played a role in her children not living with her as she was struggling to overcome her own battles. The circumstances surrounding Manage's addiction and mental health concerns certainly prevented her from providing a stable environment for her children. Despite the challenges, life continued to unfold for Manage. Then something unexpected happened. On May 1, 2023, the St. Paul police received a distress call from Manage's father. This investigation began on May 1st, when the family of Manija Starin reported her missing. Manija also is referred to as Manny by her friends and family. During the call, he revealed troubling details about Manija's struggles with drug addiction and mental health issues. He disclosed that she had plans to enter a drug treatment center, but failed to show up. The last contact he had with Manija was on April 18, 2023. She had appeared paranoid and afraid. Her father expressed concerns that she was frightened of a boyfriend. With the call concluded, the officers sprang into action. They looked for Manage at her apartment. Unfortunately, she was nowhere to be found. In their pursuit of answers, the investigators located and engaged in conversation with an individual simply identified as the father of one of Manage's children. The man revealed that he too had not heard from Manage, and this deviated from her usual routine. Normally, she would regularly check in on him due to their shared responsibility for their son. He shared his concern, emphasizing that it was highly unusual for Manage to go more than eight hours without reaching out to ensure their child's well-being. Additionally, the man disclosed that Manage had reached out to him from various phone numbers in the past. However, their last conversation was on April 21st, 2023. The investigators also tracked down a neighbor of Manage during their conversations, the neighbor shared a disturbing observation. According to the neighbor, she had witnessed Manage at one time bearing a black eye and red marks on her neck. It's not clear when this happened exactly, but the neighbor had been alarmed by the distressing sight and confronted Manage. She asked Manage if she had been assaulted. To her dismay, 
Manager had confirmed the neighbor's suspicions, despite the neighbor's immediate instinct to call the police. Manager pleaded against involving law enforcement, convinced it would only worsen the situation. This revelation added a layer of complexity to the investigation, leaving the officers grappling with the haunting reality that had enveloped Manager's life. Continuing their investigation, the detectives proceeded to speak with the manager of Manager's apartment complex. He provided them with some valuable insights. They learned that Manager had a boyfriend named Joe, who frequented her apartment despite not being listed on the lease. The manager then provided the investigators with a phone number associated with Joe. With the obtained phone number in hand, the investigators conducted their inquiries and confirmed that it belonged to a 40-year-old man named Joseph Steve Jorgensen. Presenting Jorgensen's photograph to the manager, they sought confirmation, and the manager identified him as the individual known to him as Manager's boyfriend. This revelation marked a turning point in the investigation, setting the stage for an unsettling and bizarre series of events to follow. Now, an apartment surveillance camera situated near Manager's residence proved to be a crucial piece of evidence. On May 24, 2023, investigators were informed by the apartment manager that the surveillance video had been found, capturing an alarming incident from April 21, 2023. In the footage, Manager was seen fleeing from her apartment in evident distress, with Jorgensen, her boyfriend, in swift pursuit. He forcefully turned her around and directed her back into the apartment. The video indicated that this was the last known sighting of Manager entering her apartment on that fateful day between 5.55 and 6 p.m. But there was no corresponding footage showing her exiting the premises. But it does reveal um, evidence of Manny coming and going from her apartment, and then at a certain point, we do not see Manny again. So we see her go into her apartment. She does not come out. Jorgensen is the only one that comes out of the unit, and Manny is never seen again until we find her in Woodbury. Further examination of the surveillance recordings revealed multiple instances of Jorgensen entering and leaving the apartment between April 21st, 2023 and April 28th, 2023. Astonishingly, it was determined that Jorgensen accessed the apartment a total of 28 times during this period. Adding to the entry, the apartment management confirmed that Manager possessed only one set of keys for the residence. The surveillance footage captured Jorgensen utilizing a key for every visit he made to the apartment. As all these discoveries came to light, the investigators were left with a multitude of unsettling questions. What happened during Jorgensen's repeated visits to Manager's apartment? And most importantly, where was Manager now? Further analysis of the surveillance footage also revealed that at 4.55 p.m. on May 28, 2023, Jorgensen was captured on camera carrying two duffel bags and a suitcase as he exited the apartment. He loaded the bags into a pickup truck, bearing the Minnesota license plate NLV-677. Taking a seat on the driver's side, Jorgensen swiftly drove away. The investigators soon discovered that the pickup truck belonged to a man residing in the apartment building at 89th Century Avenue in Maplewood. In the wake of these developments, Investigators sought out a family friend who possessed crucial insights into Manager's behavior and relationships. The family friend revealed that despite Manager's struggles with drugs and crises, she had never gone more than 24 hours without contacting her loved ones. This consistent pattern had made her sudden absence all the more concerning. Additionally, the family friend disclosed a conversation with Jorgensen, whom he had spoken to over the phone following Manager's disappearance. Jorgensen had told him at the time that Manager had left for the store, but never returned. According to the family friend, Jorgensen also expressed concerns that a man named Cassell may have caused harm to Manager. Jorgensen had described this Cassell as a suspicious individual. The family friend revealed that he had not been in contact with Jorgensen since that conversation. Armed with this newfound information, the investigators recognized the gravity of the situation at hand. They couldn't ignore the fact that Jorgensen had made no effort to report Manager as missing to the police. Furthermore, the evidence indicated that no one apart from Jorgensen had entered Manager's apartment after her disappearance. This revelation heightened their suspicions, 
and they directed their focus squarely onto Jorgensen as a person of interest. He was the last known person to be in her apartment on 7th Street prior, after her disappearance. The, um, the one piece about Jorgensen is that he did not report her missing to police. Instead, um, he just went on with his life without saying anything to anyone. With growing concerns and mounting evidence, the police decided to conduct a thorough search of Manager's apartment. Accompanied by a property manager, an officer entered the premises. As they stepped inside, their attention was immediately drawn to the unsettling discoveries within. The officer and property manager noticed that the window screen to one of the bedroom windows lay discarded on the floor. Furthermore, a closer examination of the living room revealed a television with a cracked screen in multiple places. The property manager confirmed that the screen had not been damaged before this discovery. As they continued their search, the officers noticed a broken glass panel on the microwave. It showed signs of having been cleaned up. In Manager's bedroom, they observed that the bedsheet had been partially removed, revealing a foam pad atop the mattress. To their surprise, the foam pad bore a large hole that had been deliberately cut and removed. Adding to the disconcerting scene, red stains were visible at the foot of the bed. These findings intensified the growing unease surrounding Manager's disappearance, propelling the investigators further into a labyrinth of unsettling clues and harrowing possibilities. Following the necessary legal procedures, the officers obtained a warrant to thoroughly search and process Manager's apartment for vital forensic evidence. The warrant was executed on May 25, 2023. Careful examination of the apartment by crime scene technicians unveiled a disconcerting truth. Substantial amounts of blood were discovered in the living room, notably on the couch, the floor, and the kitchen area. The telltale signs of an attempted cleanup indicated that someone had made desperate efforts to remove the traces of the blood. It became increasingly evident that someone had been seriously injured or even died within the apartment walls. In subsequent analysis, the preliminary findings confirmed the grim reality. The blood samples collected from the scene belonged to none other than Manager herself. Continuing their investigation, the authorities uncovered vital information regarding Manager's finances. It was revealed that she received assistance through the state of Minnesota in the form of Electronic Benefits Transfer EBT card. This card enables recipients of government aid, such as food stamps, to make direct purchases from retailers. Recognizing the significance of this revelation, a warrant was swiftly obtained to access Manager's EBT account records. The investigation unveiled a series of transactions that occurred after her last known sighting on April 21, 2023. One such transaction took place on May 9, 2023, where Jorgensen used Manager's EBT card to conduct an ATM withdrawal at the Speedway located at 11th Century Avenue North in Maplewood. That same day, he used Manager's EBT card at the Dollar Tree store, located at 7150 Valley Creek Plaza in Woodbury. There he made a rather peculiar purchase. His shopping list included a cleaning bucket, two boxes of saran wrap, paper towels, garbage bags, liquid cleaner, latex gloves, and disinfectant wipes. This was a suspicious assortment of supplies that piqued the interest of the investigators. On May 11, 2023, Jorgensen made another transaction using Manager's EBT card, this time at the Cub Food Store, situated at 1177 Clarence Street in St. Paul, Ramsey County. He also used the card at a different Dollar Tree store, situated at 7085 10th Street, north in Oakdale. This time around, he procured more paper towels, four additional boxes of saran wrap, cleaning products, and disinfectant wipes. The recurrent purchase of such items only served to deepen the mystery surrounding Jorgensen's activities and intentions. Adding another layer of intrigue, authorities uncovered evidence implicating another individual, simply identified as ZD. This ZD also utilized Manager's EBT card. Following this, investigators proceeded to obtain a search warrant to access information related to Jorgensen's Gmail and Google accounts. Analyzing the obtained data, a series of noteworthy Google searches made by Jorgensen came to light, further deepening the investigators' concerns. On April 21, 2023, 
Jorgensen had searched for the word jugular. On May 1, 2023, he searched for what do police do with a missing persons report. On May 3, 2023, Jorgensen saw information on how to clear cookies from an Android phone. On May 27, 2023, his search query was how to remove GPS from a Lime scooter. On June 4, 2023, Jorgensen looked up Lime for soil. Now at this point, one thing you should know is that Lime, the substance Jorgensen had inquired about, can be utilized to speed up the decomposition process of a body and also the associated odors. The police were well aware of this fact, and this further heightened their concerns regarding Jorgensen's potential involvement in the disappearance of Manage. Based on the compelling evidence against Jorgensen, the police made a decisive move. Our investigators focused on an apartment earlier this week on Monday um, in relation to a search warrant in Maplewood uh, at an address on Century Avenue. The apartment investigators focused on and obtained a warrant to search was Jorgensen's. On June 26, 2023, a SWAT team moved in to execute the warrants, prepared for a potentially volatile encounter. As the officers confronted Jorgensen in his apartment, he responded with resistance, barricading himself within his bedroom. In a shocking turn of events, to the dismay of all present, Jorgensen started a fire, further escalating the danger and urgency of the situation. With utmost caution, the SWAT team made their move. A struggle ensued, and Jorgensen fiercely fought against the officers, even making an attempt to seize the firearm of a SWAT officer. Eventually, the officers successfully apprehended Jorgensen. As a precautionary measure, he was promptly transported to the region's hospital for evaluation. This was to ensure his well-being and address any potential mental health concerns that may have contributed to his actions. In addition to Jorgensen, two other individuals were present in the apartment when he was apprehended. One of them, an unidentified female, bore marks of physical harm. She had multiple bruises, scratches, and a red neck. The woman would later tell the police that Jorgensen had strangled her and issued threats of violence, including chilling words like, the neighbors won't hear you scream. The second person in the apartment was Jorgensen's roommate. During the standoff between Jorgensen and the police, the roommate had taken refuge in his own bedroom. The roommate was also taken into custody without resistance. Later at the St. Paul Police Department, the roommate provided a statement during an interview. He disclosed that he suffered from a traumatic brain injury that had resulted in a loss of his sense of smell. Additionally, he revealed a long-standing acquaintance with Jorgensen, notably the roommate clarified. Due to his Monday through Friday work schedule, he had minimal interaction with Jorgensen or the women Jorgensen brought to the apartment. Following these events, officers interviewed ZD, a friend of Jorgensen. He was the other man who had also been observed using Manage's EBT card. The exact timing of the interview with ZD remains unclear. During the discussion, ZD revealed that he had only met Manage once or twice, emphasizing that he did not have a close relationship with her. According to ZD, when he inquired about Manage, Jorgensen informed him that she had been admitted to a mental health facility. ZD further disclosed that it was Jorgensen who provided him with both Manage's EBT card and its corresponding PIN, leading him to assume that Jorgensen had permission to use the card. In addition, officers interviewed the apartment manager responsible for Jorgen's residence. The manager disclosed that multiple complaints had been lodged around May 15th or 16th, 2023, regarding a putrid odor coming from Jorgensen's apartment. It was kind of like, you know, like spoiled milk and a baby diaper kind of mix. It was just really a strong odor. The foul smell permeated the entire building. It was described by the manager as resembling that of a dead animal. Shedding further light on the situation, the manager revealed that on May 18, 2023, both he and a maintenance employee attempted to gain access to the apartment for inspection. However, Jorgensen responded with verbal hostility and physically prevented them from entering a particular bedroom, which appeared to be the source of the odor. Undeterred, the manager informed Jorgensen and his roommate that the apartment needed to be cleaned within a week, to which they complied. The manager then disclosed that shortly after, he and the maintenance employee witnessed Jorgensen carrying and dragging large black duffel bags out of the apartment. Struck by the sight, 
they had exchanged remarks suggesting the possibility of Jorgensen transporting a dead body. In response to these findings, the Forensic Services Unit of the St. Paul Police Department carefully processed Jorgensen's apartment. A search of the apartment did reveal additional uh, blood evidence that we believe is related to this case. Their report revealed the discovery of a large pool of blood in the front closet, which coincided with the location from where the foul odor had been reported. The blood had seeped through the carpet and carpet pad, and the presence of other biological material and recent maggot activity further compounded the disturbing nature of the scene. Additionally, blood was also found in the closet where Jorgensen had attempted to start the fire. Furthermore, as part of the investigation, officers recovered two padlock keys within Jorgensen's apartment following his arrest. Upon reviewing Jorgensen's phone records, it was discovered that his phone had registered a ping within the vicinity of an eye storage unit situated at 881 Weir Drive in Woodbury on May 18, 2023. Someone using Jorgensen's roommate's name began renting a storage unit at the facility on May 5, 2023. Notably, the access code assigned to the unit was used to enter the facility precisely at the time when Jorgensen's phone pinged in the same area. Recognizing the significance of this information, investigators swiftly obtained a warrant to search the storage unit. On June 28, 2023, two days after Jorgensen's arrest, investigators proceeded to the designated storage unit. As they approached the scene, they were greeted by a distinct and terrible odor, consistent with decomposing flesh. One of the keys obtained from Jorgensen's apartment appeared to fit one of the padlocks. However, the investigators eventually resorted to cutting the two padlocks to gain access. Upon entering, they discovered the presence of several items. A large cooler carefully wrapped in plastic, a blue duffel bag, and a compact carry-on suitcase. Notably, one of these bags matched the same bag Jorgensen was observed removing from Manager's apartment in the video footage. Additionally, atop the cooler, a green tote was found, containing cleaning supplies consistent with those previously purchased by Jorgensen. Acting under the direction of the Forensic Services Unit, two coolers and a duffel bag were carefully removed from the unit. A distinct and overpowering stench of decomposing flesh emanated from these containers. Enclosed within multiple layers of plastic, the contents remained inaccessible until they were transported to the medical examiner's office for further examination. Upon examination using an x-ray machine, it was revealed that the coolers and bag contained a human body. The larger cooler yielded a torso, while the larger bag held the arms and legs. The smaller cooler, on the other hand, contained a head. Subsequently, the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office conducted an autopsy on the recovered remains. The first set of remains, the torso, was carefully removed from the large cooler, Extensively enveloped in layers of saran wrap and multiple bags, great care had been taken to preserve and conceal it. The next set of remains to be removed was the head, similarly encased in numerous layers of saran wrap and bags. Finally, the third set of remains consisting of two arms, two thighs, and the remaining portions of the legs and feet were removed from the duffel bag. These remains had also been carefully wrapped in a substantial amount of saran wrap. Unwrapping the remains proved to be a time-consuming task for the medical examiner. With the completion of thorough examinations and analysis, the medical examiner successfully confirmed the identity of the remains as belonging to none other than Mangea. On Thursday, June 29th, yesterday, the Ramsey County Medical Examiner did identify those remains as Manny Starin of St. Paul. Identification was established through recognized tattoos and dental records. Tragically, the determination of the manner of her death led to the conclusion that it was a homicide. Following this, investigators turned their attention back to the surveillance footage obtained from Manjea's apartment, placing a particular focus on the bags that Jorgensen had removed from the premises. Upon careful review, it became increasingly apparent that Jorgensen had dismembered Manjaya within her own apartment meticulously dividing her remains and placing them in various bags he carried out. Jorgensen faced a series of charges in connection to the death of Mangia. He was formally accused of one count of second-degree murder, reflecting the gravity of his alleged actions. Additionally, Jorgensen was charged with arson, 
for deliberately setting a fire within his apartment during the confrontation with the SWAT team officers. The charges extended to include offenses such as threats of violence and disarming an officer. On the afternoon of June 30, 2023, Jorgensen appeared briefly in court to address the murder charge. Throughout the proceedings, he shook his head from side to side, reacting to Assistant Ramsey County Attorney Isabella Eastwood as she presented details from the complaint. Eastwood further requested that bail be set at $5 million, a proposal that received the approval of Judge Timothy Carey. Jorgensen remained mostly silent during the court appearance, offering only his name when prompted. The defense attorney opted to reserve any arguments regarding bail for a later date, suggesting that a comprehensive defense strategy was being prepared. During a press conference held on the same day Jorgensen made his court appearance, St. Paul Police Sergeant Mike Ernster unveiled a significant development that emerged during their ongoing investigation. It was revealed that another woman, Fanta Giavong, age 33, another former girlfriend of Jorgensen, was also missing. Notably, the last known sighting of Giavong occurred in July 2021 in the company of none other than Jorgensen himself. Intriguingly, her absence had not been previously reported, prompting the police to initiate a recent missing person investigation. Tragically, on July 7th, police said in a news conference that they had found the remains of Fanta Giavong, 33, in a separate storage unit in Coon Rapids, north of Minneapolis, and 30 miles from the unit where Starn's body had been discovered. More details have not yet been released regarding this second victim, but it is widely believed that Jorgensen is responsible for her murder as well. Amid these ongoing developments, Manager's family expressed their gratitude to the police for pursuing every lead in their relentless search for the truth. As for Jorgensen, if found guilty, he could face a maximum sentence of up to 40 years in prison for the charge of second-degree murder. Jorgensen's next court appearance is scheduled for August 21, 2023. In the aftermath of this harrowing case, the truth surrounding Manager's untimely demise has been unraveled, and justice is now being pursued. The efforts of law enforcement have brought us closer to understanding the tragic events that unfolded. As we contemplate the chilling details surrounding Jorgensen's actions, a haunting question arises. Are we on the verge of uncovering a potential serial killer? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Stay safe, and thanks for watching.